know you want to invest in art, but do you know where to start? If you're a bit unsure, well, you're in good company. Almost everyone who goes into investing in art for the first time feel that way. But here are some of the most basic steps to help you get started. But first, a huge disclaimer. These are all just advice. They are not to be taken as legal, financial, and investment advice and should not be construed or relied on as such. Before making any commitment of a legal or financial nature, you should seek advice from a qualified and registered legal practitioner or financial or investment advisor. No material contained here should be construed or relied upon as providing recommendations in relation to any legal or financial product. Now that is out of the way. The first thing you must realize is that art investment is like any other investment which has its own risk. It can give you a windfall or you might end up with a painting that will be hanging on your living room for eternity. Although who knows if you will end up like the owner of Ankyukov the Fisherman that was put in an auction last 2017 with a starting bid of 12 million. I don't know how much the owner bought it originally, but I can assume it's nothing close to 12 million. Look at the profit. Not all Ankyukovs have the same happy ending though. Judging by the estimated fetch price, this one undersold for 6,000 US dollars, which is a little over 300,000 pesos. And then sometimes the economy can get in the way and people prefer assets that are easier to liquidate, like cars and property. But then the poor economy can become a buyer's market where the prices are slashed just to meet the quota. But regardless how the economy is performing, you need to do diligent research by asking for advice from experts who have no vested financial interest. Talk to friends who are also into art investing, watch videos, read up, visit galleries and museums, etc. When you have finally decided you want to go for it, choose a category. Don't buy anything and everything that your money can buy. Car sellers don't buy all the cars that come their way. They choose what brand, model, year, and price range. In the same way, you need to narrow down your choices. You can choose by artist. It can be one artist, it can be artist by gender, or it can be artist from a particular era or region. You can choose by style, like realism, expressionism, cubism, contemporary, etc. You can choose by theme, like portraits, modern child, still life, fiestas, etc. You can choose by period, like 40s, 50s, or only from the 21st century. You can choose by medium like oil, acrylic, watercolor, or mixed media. You can even combine the choices like photorealistic watercolor paintings of VSS by Ilongo artists during the Curry Aquino years. <sighs> anyway, speaking of artists, there are different types in terms of career. Although there's no canon definition yet, we will refer to emerging artists as those who are just beginning their career with little or no reputation in the art establishment. Then we have mid-career artists who have built a portfolio enough to be taken notice by galleries, art publications, and collectors. And then we have the blue chip artists whose prices make the eyes of people who are not into arts pop out. Investing in art is like investing in properties and stocks where we should aim to buy low and sell high. But unlike stocks, which can give us profit in a matter of days, in art, it takes time like property. Yes, we can flip for as long as there is an immediate buyer. But if you want a full appreciation, you might have to wait for at least 10 years. Case in point is our Ankyu Cock. Imagine if the original buyer simply flipped the fisherman weeks after purchasing it. There's nothing wrong with flipping. But as in any investments, there are short, mid, and long-term investments. You need to know which ones fall under which category. And since we're just newbies in selling art, you once again need the advice of art historians, curators, gallery owners, or even friends who may be considered as a connoisseur. And because you want to buy low, it's best to buy directly from the artist, but do your research on how much their gallery prices are. I have encountered artists who still give me a gallery price. One even gave double. Of course, we all know that investing in pieces will be 
cheaper when you buy works from living artists than those who have passed on. You also need to talk to appraisers to determine the value of a treasure, if it's a real treasure in the first place. Not all works from the same artist have equal value. Remember our Uncle Cox? One went crazy with the price in the auction and the other one was undersold. This is why it's important to talk to art advisors to determine if the art that you want to buy will merit any value 10 or 20 years down the road. The fisherman had incredible value because it was made during a certain period. It was created during Ang Kukok's most productive and most creative, the 80s. But remember, everything is pure speculation. Anything can happen. Art appraisers can also help you determine your asking price by checking its sales price history and how the condition of the piece will affect its value. Speaking of condition, you might have to shell out more money for maintenance and upkeep and even storage. You also need to keep visiting exhibits, galleries, and museums to stay on pulse. Just like investing in stocks, you always need to be up to date to know when to unload. By the way, you will often hear it said that when it comes to buying art, you should buy what you love. This is imperative for personal purchases, but things may be less personal when it comes to investing. Store owners do not stock their shelves with things that they like, but what the market likes. These steps are not sequential, but they are consequential. But like in everything else, there is no such thing as a sure thing. The most you can do is to try to be sure what you are getting into. Wishing you the best in your endeavor. Support Pinoy artists.